For centuries, we've imagined the mind as a machine, a kind of inner theater inside the brain, watching, calculating, storing, and replaying experiences. We've been told that consciousness is an internal process, sealed off from the outside world, running on a kind of neural software. But what if this picture is wrong? What if the mind isn't something that happens inside your head, but something that comes alive in your relationship to the world? In the 1990s, neuroscientist and Buddhist practitioner Francisco Varela introduced a radically different idea, the inactive mind. His core claim? That cognition is not computation, it's embodied action. We bring forth a world as we move through it. Today, we'll explore Varela's visionary model, where biology, phenomenology, and Buddhist wisdom converge, and discover a mind that is not isolated, but enacted. Francisco Varela was not your typical scientist. Trained in biology and neuroscience, he co-authored the groundbreaking book Autopoiesis and Cognition, which introduced the idea that living systems are self-creating, self-maintaining, autonomous but deeply relational. But Varela's curiosity didn't stop at cells or circuits. He was deeply influenced by phenomenology, the philosophical study of first-person experience, and was also a longtime practitioner of Tibetan Buddhism. He believed science alone couldn't explain consciousness, but neither could mysticism alone. So he sought a middle path, a science that respected both neural dynamics and lived experience. Along with Evan Thompson and Eleanor Roche, he co-authored The Embodied Mind, a landmark text that bridged cognitive science and Buddhist philosophy. At its heart was a single idea. The mind is not in the head. It is in the living, breathing, acting body, in the dance between organism and world. The inactive approach turns the traditional model of cognition on its head. Instead of seeing the mind as a passive receiver of information, like a camera taking pictures, Varela proposed that perception is active, participatory, and constructive. Cognition isn't about processing inputs from a pre-given world. It's about bringing forth a world through embodied engagement. You don't passively observe the world. You enact it. A tree is not just out there. It becomes a tree in your experience, shaped by your body, your history, your expectations. This applies not only to perception, but to meaning, selfhood, and consciousness itself. In the inactive view, the self is not a fixed thing inside the brain. It is a process, a dynamic, ongoing pattern of interaction between body, mind, and environment. This is what Varela called the virtual self, coherent, but never static, real, but never separate. At the biological core of Varela's model is the concept of autopoiesis, which he developed with Chilean biologist Humberto Maturana. Autopoiesis means self-making, and it refers to the unique property of living systems to generate and sustain their own boundaries, identities, and coherence. A cell, for instance, maintains its own membrane, metabolizes energy, and repairs itself. But this autonomy is not isolation. It depends on structural coupling with the environment. In other words, Life is both self-producing and world-engaged. This biological insight became the foundation of the inactive mind. Consciousness, for Varela, is not a ghost in the machine. It is the felt coherence of a self-producing, embodied organism interacting with its world. And this means that mind, meaning, and even identity are not things we have, but things we do, continuously, creatively, and relationally. Varela's philosophy was not just academic, it was deeply lived. As a serious student of Tibetan Buddhism, he saw remarkable parallels between the inactive view of mind and the Buddhist understanding of dependent origination, the idea that all phenomena, including the self, arise in dependence on conditions and have no inherent independent essence. In both views, the self is a construct, a process, a co-arising pattern of perception, memory, emotion, and body. What we call I is a useful fiction, not false, but not ultimate either. Buddhist meditation trains the mind to witness this process directly, to observe the arising and passing of thoughts, the constructed nature of identity, and the deep interdependence between self and world. For Varela, 
This wasn't just spiritual insight, it was phenomenological data. The first-person experience of meditation could help us understand the mind just as much as EEG scans or brain imaging. And in bridging science and contemplative practice, Varela helped launch a new field, neurophenomenology. In the inactive framework, meaning is not out there, waiting to be discovered, nor is it in here, waiting to be applied. Instead, meaning emerges in the act of engagement. Just as the self arises in the interaction between body and world, meaning arises in the encounter between perception and context. Imagine walking through a forest. You don't just see a shape and label it tree. Your body feels its scale. Your memories recognize its kind. Your emotions respond to its presence. The tree is not just data. It is meaningful experience. And that meaning is enacted. This idea has profound implications. It means that consciousness is not a mirror of reality. It is a creative act. Every moment is a microbirth of a world. Every perception is a participation. Every thing is a co-arising. In this view, you are not an observer of the world. You are a participant in its becoming. If there is no fixed self inside the brain, then what are you? Varela would say, you are a pattern, a flow, a process, a locus of coordination between lived body, felt experience, and world. The self is not found in any one part of the brain. It is not an object. It is a network of processes, stabilizing over time through habit, memory, and emotion. In Buddhist terms, this is called anatta, the doctrine of no self. Not that you don't exist, but that you don't exist the way you think you do. You are not a thing. You are a becoming, a moment-to-moment -moment enactment of body, mind, and world. And this realization, whether through science or meditation, is the doorway to freedom. Because when you stop grasping at a fixed self, when you let go of the illusion of control, you begin to flow with reality. You become less reactive, more present, more alive. Varela believed this wasn't just philosophy, it was practice. He described an inactive ethics, grounded not in rules or doctrines, but in embodied wisdom, attentive presence, and compassionate response. In his final years, as he faced terminal illness, he spoke of life not as a possession, but as a gift, something to be enacted gracefully, mindfully, moment by moment. The inactive view calls us to live differently, to see that we are not minds trapped in bodies, nor are we blank observers of a world outside us. We are living processes, co-creating a meaningful world through attention, care, and presence. The mind is not something we have. It is something we are constantly becoming, in every step, every breath, every interaction. Francisco Varela died young, but his vision continues to ripple outward, in neuroscience, in philosophy, in mindfulness, and in how we think about being itself. He showed us that the mind is not a machine, not a thing, but a dance. A dance between self and world. A dance between biology and meaning. A dance between emptiness and form. In the end, the inactive mind is not just a theory, it's an invitation. An invitation to wake up from the illusion of separation and to rediscover yourself as the living edge of a world that is always becoming. If this video resonated with you, leave a comment. Have you ever felt that your sense of self shifted as you moved, interacted, or meditated? And if you'd like to explore more frontiers of consciousness, science, and awakening, subscribe. Because this journey we're on, it's not in the mind alone. It's enacted moment by moment as life itself.